Hello beautiful sisters and welcome to today's class where we will be discussing Cacao Ceremony 101 and a little tarot reading for you. I've got a new deck of cards and I thought it would be a perfect perfect way to initiate them and give them their first run through the spirit realm. So that's what we are here for today. What is ceremonial grade cacao? At its core, this is a gentle plant medicine and it comes from Peru. It has been around for centuries, making it one of those original sacred ancient practices that we are lucky enough to still share today. The idea that cacao is medicine and has been used for spiritual purposes, is used for spiritual purposes, can be a new concept for some people. I know I didn't even know about it until a few years ago when I started exploring into the, the spiritual world and going to new workshops and events. I had not even thought of anything more than, you know, chocolate bars, a dessert, things like that. So most commonly cacao is thought of as a chocolate bar and even recently um, more so like an exotic superfood you know that all the influences may be raving about maybe you even thought that it was a fad kind of thing like celery juice or you know chia seeds acai goji like all these things that have been labeled superfoods most people i speak to about ceremonial cacao they are intrigued and they are drawn to the idea but they are unsure about the difference between raw cacao powder found at your health food store and the ceremonial grade product, but also cocoa, right? So there is a difference between cocoa and cacao, and they look so similar, um, the two words. And it's okay if you thought they were the same thing. I did for many, many years. What the difference is, cocoa powder has been roasted for a long period of time at high temperatures, which does change the molecular structure of the bean lowering its natural abundant nutritional value. So cocoa powder is what you'd use in baking, right? And then there's cacao powder. And although it may be organic, raw, um, and a superfood, it's also highly processed to meet commercial standards. So what that does is removes the bean's natural fats, which is the cacao butter. So this means that the, the many living enzymes, the healthy fats, and most of the subtle energetic properties of the cacao has been destroyed. And then we have the ceremonial grade cacao. So this is a grade above the rest. Every other chocolate product that you will buy, and that does include the, the raw organic powder, it has had the cacao butter and the fibers separated, and many elements then are stripped away from the product. So the ceremonial grade cacao has had minimum tampering of the bean's integrity. The bean is lightly roasted at a very, which is a very important part of the process. It's been deshelled and ground with a stone grinder. And a lot of this is done by hand. There are many companies out there nowadays that are selling ceremonial grade cacao. Um, it, it has become quite popular, especially in you know embodiment, empowerment, spiritual groups for workshops. And I encourage you to do your research before you choose one to buy and to drink and to make your ceremonies and your rituals with. There is an ancient and beautiful strain of cacao from Peru called Criollo. And finding a supplier who hasn't tampered with the beans integrity too much will be of huge benefit for you and your ceremonies, whether they be for you personally or for other groups as a facilitator. For anyone in Australia, I highly, highly recommend using Lena, who lives in Brisbane, Queensland. Lucky for me, she's in my area and she's the founder and creator of Australian Ceremonial Cacao. So I did try a few cacaos before finding Lena, but this is, is hers. And these are her beans, not her beans, uh, her product. What she does is she melts it down nice and slow into beautiful hearts so it is easy to serve you can you can do your serving size and I, i'll link her website in the lesson notes so you can check it out and read about the product even if you're not in australia she has a lot of great information on her page so what is a cacao ceremony chocolate is medicine and this is chocolate as medicine and how lucky are we that we get to indulge in this exquisite treat as a spiritual practice. 
So engaging with chocolate as this sacred ritual rather than just consuming it as the sweet treat or the sugar fix, it has a direct positive impact on our individual well-being as well as our global ecosystem. And this is where the ever powerful ripple effect takes place. When we raise our own vibration, when we become aware of our present moment, when we continue the journey of self-loving in ritual with this sacred product, this sacred plant medicine, a major ripple effect of loving vibration is going out into the world. And this is the intention and the work of Cacao Spirit, of Mama Cacao. And when we all find this loving place within ourselves, our frequency and our radiation vibrations, they change, they heighten. And from this space, we are healing ourselves and also humanity, the people that come in, into contact with us. I love the ripple effect. Everything we do has a ripple effect. A cacao ceremony can become the ritual based centerpiece to your self renewal routine that keeps you centered keeps you connected to your heart and living in a replenished way. Cacao is a heart opener. Remember that it is a deep, deep connection to self, to love and to compassion and kindness. Your cacao ceremonies are rituals where cacao is consumed in a sacred way, typically with the intention of opening the heart chakra and creating feelings of love, empathy and appreciation. Every ceremony is unique and it's going to be different for each one of you and every ceremony could look different every time you do one. It's an exciting opportunity for you to put together the most enjoyable experience for you in that moment, what you're wanting to call in, what you're wanting to release, what you're wanting to set your intentions as. There are so many things that you can include in your ceremonies, right? So you can have prayer, meditation, yoga, movement, dance, a burning of sage, incense, palo santo. You can do eye gazing with yourself or with a partner. You can do tarot cards. You can have music playing, sound healing. You're not limited to any of these. As long as you have an intention and you keep your space sacred, there is no wrong way for you to hold your ceremony. And you can do your ceremony alone. You can do it with one friend or you can do it with a group. There are no rules here. They are, cacao ceremonies are a place to provide inner healing and transformation, an opportunity to release emotional blocks, connect intimately with others and enhance your intuition and your mood. These ceremonies can be an opportunity to gain clarity, to set powerful intentions and journey within to clear the old and make way for the new. So here is a little step-by-step -step for uh, a simple cacao ceremony if you are wanting to do one at home, a little basic one. Firstly, you set up your space with your favorite things. Your candles, your incense, your oracle cards, your crystals, your music, pen and paper to journal, making sure that you feel comfortable, making sure that you won't be disturbed so your phones are off, you've let anyone else know if they're at home with you not to disturb you for a few minutes. Make sure that you have something uh, warm close by if you get cold easy or socks on, however you feel most comfortable. Secondly, you close down your eyes, you drop into your body with your breath and with your consciousness we start to open up the heart space. So you can do this laying down, you can do this seated, you can place your hands on your body and consciously breathe, focusing on your breath, feeling it move in and out of your body and visualize your heart space opening up. So maybe you even roll your shoulders back and down and actively start to open that space. Then you intentionally welcome Mama Cacao into your heart. So you can choose your words here, you can say them out loud, you can say them in your mind, but Mama Cacao, I invite you to intertwine with my spirit in ceremony and guide me in any way you think I need. Help me to la 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 la. That is your, your time to speak to Mama Cacao, to start speaking to her and asking her to help you with anything that you need. It can be a project. It can be gaining more insight, wisdom, clarity, understanding. It can be a deadline. It can be communication, creativity, inspiration, whatever it is. So setting a clear intention is the next step so that she can know how to work with you and help you on your journey throughout your ceremony. 
Remember here that, that she works with you, not for you. We are in control. We are taking self-responsibility. We are asking for her guidance, for her support, but not to do the work for us. She can't do that. Next is, it's nice to journal. If you if you're someone who does like to write, who likes to keep a bit of a diary, maybe even to go back and revisit what your ceremonies were like each time. Because you may also just have pen and paper near you because I know for me, little messages, little downloads of wisdom during your ceremony time, your ritual time, like it, it happens and you can, you can write these down. So it can be messages from source, messages from Mama Cacao, inspirations, ideas for, for projects. Maybe you're stuck on something and clarity just comes while you're in the middle of your ritual and you get to list it down. So pen and paper is always great to have with you. Also, nice big cup of water, bottle of water. So I wanna share with you my recipe. Okay, beautiful women, welcome to my little kitchen corner here. I hope you can hear me okay. It is bucketing down rain outside, but I am wanting to show you my perfected cacao recipe. I tried lots of different nut milks. I tried different spices. And this is the recipe that I have come to love and I use this in my ceremonies with myself, with my partner, when I facilitate women's workshops, uh, women's circles. So I want to go through how I make it and maybe it'll inspire you. So I do like to add a little bit of sweetness to mine and I do like to use nut milk. So it isn't just watery, it isn't bitter. It, it really does taste like the most beautiful hot chocolate you've ever had ever. So the way it works is with my cacao, um, as I shared earlier, they come in these beautiful little hearts. So I use two per serve. So two per person. If I'm making it for a big group, depending how big the group is, you can use less um, and it can spread out. Or if it's just for me and my partner, I'll put four in there. So I sit them in the bottom of the pan and I let that heat up. Now I use agave syrup. Now this is a vegan substitute for honey or maple syrup. Um, I like it because it isn't too sweet and I just add a little squirt of that. I've got ground cinnamon, just a tiny little pinch of that and I use Barista Macadamia Milk. Now this brand isn't the brand that I usually use. I've run out of the brand that I usually use but I have this in the cupboard but I find that a Barista edition of the milk allows it to froth up and become really, really creamy. Now, some people like to blend theirs in a blender, a thermomix. I like to do mine on the stove with a whisk. Um, that's just the way that I've always done it and I find it easier to clean that way, but I'll show you the cooking process. So I really love to have my cacao in a special mug. I really like ceramic, handmade pottery mugs. Sometimes I do like to use a little bowl if I'm having doing a ceremony, you know, you can hold it with two hands and you can sip it. This beautiful hand crafted mug I found at an off shop, so a thrift shop. I think it's a great place to go and find 
beautiful things that were made by hand from other people and use them for sacred ceremonies. So this is my ceremony mug, one of them. I do have a few, but you can see it is beautiful, it is divine, it's got the perfect hand holding positions. And that's it, sisters. I hope you enjoy. Mm. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay, so a little, a few little ideas here for some ceremony exercises. If you are still feeling a little stuck, a little lost for inspiration, maybe for your first couple of ceremonies, you'd like some step-by-step -step guidance. So here are some exercises that you can include in your ceremony. As I said earlier, number one is journaling. Write down all the things that you are grateful for. Maybe you wanna list your abundances, your desires, your goals. Next, you can write down inspirations, messages from cacao spirits, ideas as they flow through you. Next, set intentions. You can have one, you can have many. You don't have to set an intention, but it is a great chance to laser focus on something that you want to call in or release. Next is movement and dance. So creatively, authentically express in any way you feel called to. Next is meditate. In silence or with beautiful music, maybe even a guided meditation. Next is journeying. So using maybe shamanic drumming, which I know you can look up on YouTube um, to guide you on a deep healing or discovery journey. Next is maybe you wanna use cacao as a coffee replacement. Look, I love cacao so much that I drink it sometimes just because. Even without making it a ceremony or a sacred ritual, this magic elixir still warms, softens, and opens my heart even if I'm just having it because I feel like that beautiful drink. Lastly, is to be in nature. If you are able to set up your space out in nature for your ceremony, it is a beautiful way to connect deeper with Pachimama, Mother Gaia, Mother Earth, with your land, your country, and the original custodians of your land. Of course, uh, it's raining here now, and it has been for the last week, so I'll be doing inside ceremonies today, but it is a beautiful, beautiful way to connect deeper doing it outside. Now, if you are interested in attending a cacao ceremony so maybe you don't have any of your own cacao yet you um not feeling confident enough to facilitate for yourself your own personal journey you can definitely google and find ceremonies that might be happening around your area and attend your first ceremony in a group facilitated by someone else i always love attending cacao ceremonies because every facilitator has a little bit of a different flair, a different way that they go about holding the space. And I love to, to feel the energy of the different teachers, men and women very different in energy, as you know, the yin and the yang. Um, so it is great to Google and have a look around, but there's 10 things that I wanna share with you before you attend your first group cacao ceremony. Number one is to go with an open mind and an open heart. You don't have to be a health guru or a chocolate connoisseur to participate in a cacao ceremony. These ceremonies do different things for everyone and each ceremony you attend is going to give you something different back. Number two is expectations. Don't think that you're gonna to have to have a spiritual revelation and if you don't, it was a waste of time. Simply go and if you want some time to self-explore, this is your opportunity for that. Whatever happens is meant to happen. And having that deep trust that you receive what you need in that moment is going to make it a beautiful experience every single time. Number three is expect to take off your shoes, right? It's a sacred space. It's a ritual space. Make sure you have socks on or you bring socks to keep your feet warm. It is normal that your body temperature fluctuates and it does start to drop if you are laying still for a prolonged period of time. So socks, little scarf, light blanket, something like that. Number four is to generally go with an empty stomach, okay? If you are brand new to this and you haven't had ceremonial grade cacao before, it can be quite triggering to your, uh, your system, right? Your nervous system. So have something light beforehand, but if you are used to fasting and having this cleansing process, come with an empty stomach or go with an empty stomach. It is a very filling drink and some ceremonies they will also offer you to eat the cacao as well as drinking it and it look it does stimulate your nervous system there is trace amounts of caffeine in cacao and the more processed the cacao is 
the higher it is going to like react to your body. There's been some cacaos that I've drank that has made me feel like I've had double espresso and I don't like that feeling. And I know with the cacao that I use now, it has not been through a, a very big or you know a lot of processing and it doesn't I can have it before bed and it's completely fine so also be aware that depending on what cacao is served to you it may stimulate you it may you know act like a caffeine so number five is to dress comfortably right layers are good because you might get hot you can take layers off you might get cold you can put it on so be as prepared as possible for whatever might happen in your body number six is to bring a yoga mat a pillow and a decent bottle of filtered water you should always drink a lot of water after cacao number seven is each ceremony leader will have their different uh, desired way of mixing the sacred drink so be, be ready to drink the cacao however it comes most people who um, are quite traditional with their recipe it will be there will be no sugar it will be with water um, probably some spices like cinnamon or cayenne pepper so it can be quite bitter other people like to do it with a bit of sweetener or some nut milks. So just be prepared that however it comes is how it's meant to be for that one. Number eight is be ready to potentially be uncomfortable. This is a journey. These are journeys. These ceremonies are also a, a place for you to sit with discomfort and look at it in a different way. So maybe it, it could be that the temperature of the room is not to your liking. Maybe it could be that your drink is not hot enough or it is, is too bitter and you're not used to that. What, what you have the opportunity to do here also is ex observe why you don't like something. Why does it trigger in your body? What is your mind doing? Where can you maybe learn a lesson from in this space? Using these ceremonies as the place to go deeper within your psyche, within your body, your sensations. Not every ceremony is going to be enjoyable and that is a great place for you to practice non-attachment, detachment, right? Being unconditional with your experience. So yes, I've been in many, many places where um, I did not enjoy the ceremony because I went in with expectations and I had to fully just release that, let go of ego and trust that it was meant to be as it was. Number nine is during the ceremony, if you feel like the instruments, right, they're too intense or that the, the person next to you is loud, fidgety or even snoring, keep in mind that the cacao ceremony is an experience and you are receiving what you are meant to receive. We have to keep fighting that need to be in control. The purpose is to understand that it's best to simply awaken to the experience. Number 10 and lastly is that these ceremonies can last anywhere between one to two hours depending on who's leading it. So be ready for the uh, potential heart opening and eventually a greater awareness of yourself and who you're really meant to be. It can be a full journey that you might start feeling great. You might have an emotional overwhelm happen. Your body might go through a stress response or a, a past trauma or a triggering. Then you might float off into a blissful, uh, you know, meditative sleep and then you might come back. Like it can, it's a roller coaster, my friends, and you must ride the waves and make sure your phone is off. There is nothing worse than being in the middle of a ceremony going through your own beautiful experience and then having someone's phone go off. So that's my little 10, 10, 10, 10 tips for you before attending your first ceremony. Now, the collective tarot reading. I have this beautiful, beautiful new set of cards. I have yet to use them and I wanted to make my first reading with you beautiful people. Before any new shuffle of any new deck I always cleanse the cards with Palo Santo or Sage this is to clear the energy of the cards obviously it's been through a packaging process who knows how long it's been on the shelves how many hands have touched it which means the different energies that have been placed on the cards and so I want to now remove those energies and fill it with my intention. So I will do 
a shuffle today whatever card flies out is the message for the collective feminine rising in this moment and also know that it's timeless whenever you rewatch this video that message was meant for you on the day that you get to watch this is the day that you're meant to receive mm. So these are the dreams of Gaia Tarot. And as we know, Gaia is Mother Earth. So this is beautiful. Let's spread the cards out. Beautiful sisters, we have Queen of Water. The Queen of Water symbolizes a gentle, empathetic soul who possesses a keen sense of intuition. She is loving, compassionate, and always kind. She knows when something is wrong, when a friend is hurting and in need of comfort or counsel. She is naturally in tune with her emotions and the emotions of those around her. It is in this natural connection and gentleness that draws people to her. She is empathetic and would never consider being deliberately cruel or unkind. She is generous and giving of herself to a fault. Only by having and maintaining healthy boundaries does this water queen protect herself from becoming drained. Her ability to intuitively see and know is her greatest strength. She looks beyond the surface to what lies within the subconscious, seeing the emotions of old that influence the past. She can sense the mood of a moment or the undercurrents that flow through a room full of people. And because she can read others' emotions with ease, she can often distinguish truth from falsehood. This knowledge empowers. With it, the ever-romantic Queen of Water can often offer the perfect solution, particularly in matters of the heart so good she believes in the power of love but is also wise and knows that relationships need to be nurtured and maintained that emotional honesty is key and is a willingness to share our feelings when we share our true feelings we make ourselves vulnerable not to be willing to do so shows both courage and strength is this queen a part of your nature is there someone in your life who needs or would benefit from your help and loving support or is it you who needs to seek out a like energy in your life for healing or guidance? When the Queen of Water appears in your cards, she signifies a very affirming and positive energy, for she is the epitome of love in all of its forms. Take heart and know that bright days are ahead. Oh, so we've got a paragraph here on potential blockage. So when the Queen of Water appears, reversed she cautions you against using the love you have for others as a weapon resist the temptation to withdraw love in order to punish or control do not allow your hurt to make you hard or so jaded that you withdrew behind an impenetrable shell let your vulnerability show by remaining open to discussion be honest and express your feelings even if doing so means the possibility of losing someone you love the Queen of Water, reversed, also cautions against following your heart blindly. Common sense and careful thought are required in any decision that needs to be made, especially one that may be emotionally difficult. Trust in your feelings, yes, but also be sensible and let heart and head have equal say. This is such an incredible card to pull today when we are talking about cacao and cacao being such a heart opener. This is going to mean, this card is going to mean something different for each of you who are listening to this. And if you rewatch this video, it's going to mean something different to you in every single moment. These messages, as I say, are timeless and you will be able to depict what your hidden message is every time you see this. So there are key phrases here. Trust in your feelings and senses. Look beyond the surface. A bright and positive outcome. To show vulnerability is to show strength. Are you overextending emotionally? Be the embodiment of love. Withdraw love as a punishment. Use your common sense. Thank you, sisters, for sharing in this beautiful discussion with me, this class, and my first reading with the new cards and the new deck. 
It has been an honor and very exciting to announce, but we will be getting Lena on soon from Australian Ceremonial Cacao to actually facilitate and hold uh, a live cacao ceremony with us. So I encourage you if it's something that you would like to attend or to start holding in your life these ceremonies these rituals to to start searching for a supplier near you for your ceremonial grey cacao remember read through their website make sure that they have listed there where they get it from the process of it and if they don't list it uh, maybe you can email them and ask for the information i'm always available if you have any questions about sourcing your own perfectly you know sacred cacao and yeah get the order happening and in the next month or two we're going to have lena on for that ceremony much love to you my beautiful women enjoy the rest of your day i love you so much